What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video here on fancyfootballscout.co.uk. You are here with me, FPL Harry, for my weekly hot topic series. We've done wild cards throughout the season, we've done top transfer targets and today we are back again with that feature. We're doing my top five transfer targets for the final two game weeks. It is game week 15, two game weeks now. Until the World Cups, we're gonna have a look at five transfer targets, some obvious and some potentially a bit more of a differential to get your senses tingling about who you should be bringing in to your fancy teams. We'll have a look at their stats so far, a bit of a discussion about how they're performing and the fixtures that they do have between now and the end of the season and the players in your teams that they could potentially be replacing. If you have injuries in your team, in the likes of Bakayo Saka, players that are not performing well with the likes of Wilfred Zaha, or you have players with difficult fixtures in the likes of Alexander Mitrovic, then there are definitely some options in here at a variety of price points. Happy Halloween to anyone celebrating. Let's dive into the first one. So before we look at the options, we do want to have a quick review of the fixtures. The next two fixtures, of course, are the only fixtures that we need to look at, the only ones that we care about with the upcoming World Cup. Again, over the World Cup, between game week 16 and 17, we have unlimited transfers. So there's absolutely no point in looking at the fixtures beyond game week 16. At the top, we do have Everton, we have Manchester City, we also have Bournemouth, Brighton and Manchester United, all ranking very near the top for some of the best fixtures between now and the World Cup in game week 16. At the bottom, the likes of Fulham, Brentford, Spurs, Chelsea, some of us might be invested in some of those assets as well. It's also worth bearing in mind which of the teams like we see in here with West Ham, with Manchester City as well, that have two home fixtures between now and the World Cup. Again, backing teams in home fixtures are always better than backing teams in away fixtures. Again, we'll be having a look at potentially some teams that have two home fixtures versus having two away fixtures. So again, if you want to take these graphics away, screenshot them, whatever you want. Again, they're ranked by difficulty with best overall fixtures in the top left to worst overall fixtures in the bottom right. But we need to talk about actually my top five transfer targets for you. Number one, we're going to start with potentially a bit of a differential. 5.6 million Saeed Benrahma of West Ham. Currently just 0.8% owned. West Ham are one of those teams that have two home fixtures. They sit very high up. The fixture ticker with Crystal Palace at home and Leicester at home between the World Cup and now. Again, Ben Rama's stats so far this season are not necessarily that great as he's not been nailed in that West Ham team. However, one goal and one assist for him already this season with an XGA of 2.77, so performed about as we would expect. Now, the key reason he is in there is because Paqueta and Corne for West Ham are both out injured and are very, very unlikely to feature again before the World Cup. Again, with Europa League, there's no sort of chance of him being forced into those competitions. So it does look like Ben Rama could be set to start both of these at a cut price of 5.6 million compared to the more expensive Jared Bowen at 8.1 million in that West Ham attack. Now, the only concern that you have in minutes here is Pablo for now. So there'll be people in the comments already, I'm sure, saying why not Ben Rama, why Pablo Fornals could start in his place. Now, yes, that is a chance. And yes, David Moyes is not necessarily the biggest fan of Saeed Ben Rama. But I think over the next two, given the way he's performed recently, he could be a really, really hot prospect. Again, he's taking some set pieces. He's also taken penalties as well. Now, if Lanzini is on the pitch, then potentially it could be him. But if Ben Rama is starting and Lanzini is not, then potentially he could be the one to be on penalties as well. So at 5.6 million, a massive, massive differential if you are looking for one. A lot of people going for the likes of Trossard, Rashford in there as well. But those fixtures that you have, two home fixtures for West Ham over the next two with set pieces, with penalties and his threat from open play, he could be a big, big differential at a great price. Next up, we go up front to a player who was in my transfer targets for game week 14, but did blank, but still has two great fixtures with Leicester and Bournemouth in the two matches going into the World Cup, and that is forward Dominic Calvert-Lewin. 7.9 million and still a big differential. Just one goal and 0.99 expected goal involvement for him so far this season in his three starts. 
13 points so far this season with 3.7 points per start, but it is just what he has the capacity to do in those two fixtures. A lot of people moved early already or will be contemplating going in on Callum Wilson, who's the other big mid price forward that you could go and get. Now, Callum Wilson goes away to Southampton before hosting Chelsea at home in game week 16. If you do fancy a differential and you love a good fixture, then Calvert-Lewin over Callum Wilson is definitely something that has the upside. My only slight concern with Calvert-Lewin is that Everton seem to be focusing on their defensive abilities before trying to blow teams away with the amount of goals they score. However, Calvert-Lewin likely to be on penalties. So he's their main goal threat as well. As soon as he scores, the bonus points potential for him is absolutely massive. Again, those fixtures that are there, I really, really like him as a differential. And if I was picking between him and Calvert-Lewin, it would be so, so close. Maybe Calvert-Lewin would get it just off that Southampton fixture. But if you are looking over the next two, I really like Calvert-Lewin as well. Which would you pick? Wilson versus Calvert-Lewin. I find it very hard to decide. Let me know who you'd pick if you've already bought one of them in the comments below. Now, pick number three is a highly spoken about one. He was one I potentially bought in game week 14 into my team. I didn't. I went with the injured Bakari Saka instead and how I wish I went with Marcus Rashford. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Football Scout as well. Make sure you've liked the video if you have not already. But two good fixtures, both away from home though, for Marcus Rashford, who tends to do better at home than he does away from home. But Aston Villa and Fulham, in the next two could be really, really good for Marcus Rashford, who is lining up front for Manchester United, playing centre forward despite being classed as a midfielder and just 6.6 .6 million as well as a midfielder, which gets him the extra point for the clean sheet, which they do seem to be keeping at the moment, thanks to David De Gea. He gets the extra point for a goal as well, which he did get in game week 14. Four goals, two assists, slightly outperforming his expected goals, expected assists, but still the amount of points that he's been getting per start at 5.2 means that I think he could continue to do well over the next two. Him versus Ben Rahm, if you do want to go for a differential with a slightly lower budget. I do think Ben Rama can outperform Almiron over the final two, but if you have the money to go up to Marcus Rashford, although it is two away fixtures, I do like what he can offer between now and the World Cup. Pick number four is a big differential, and if you are looking at a cheap forward, look no further than Keitha Moore at Bournemouth. Very, very high up the fixture ticker with Leeds away and Everton at home in the two fixtures between now and the World Cup for Bournemouth. Again, he's come into the side. He scored three goals in his most recent few starts. Again, 4.5 points per start. He is looking really good in the focal point of that Bournemouth attack. Now, a lot of us with Dominic Solanke, I'm not saying move sideways, but if I was buying a Bournemouth forward at the moment and looking for a cheap, cheap option, it probably would be Kiefer more over the likes of Dominic Solanke, over the likes of Edouard at Crystal Palace as well. I'd probably be staying clear of Crystal Palace again as a Zaha owner. It's a painful, painful watch every week. He is playing centre forward. He's also likely to be on penalties for Bournemouth as well. It's just such a nice option. If you are looking to downgrade, if you've got an injured forward in the like of Mitrovic, you can't get up to the likes of Calvert-Lewin or Wilson, you need to downgrade. Skamaka at West Ham is also, but we spoke about Ben Rahm at a cheaper price. Keith Moore could be a really nice option. Here's a big punt, but playing in that striker role with whilst Dominic Slanky pulls out to the wings, I think he could be really good and get a couple of returns in these final two games. And then finally, the cheap option. We're going in for Luke Shaw. And again, everyone in the comments will be screaming at me, why not Diego Dallo over Luke Shaw? And it is just the four yellow cards for Diego Dallo. Dallo might want his re yellow cards to be reset going into Boxing Day, which means he would take a yellow card going into game week 15. And then he would be suspended for game week 16, of course. It is two away fixtures, but Aston Villa and Fulham have showed pretty mixed form recently, particularly going forward. Both of them scoring goals in some games and looking completely absent in other matches matches as well. He only has one attack in return with an assist, but that Manchester United defence with David De Gea in there look really, really assured and I would expect them to keep one clean sheet over the next two. Now, I don't necessarily think defensive transfers are really worth it. The only defence I look at over the next two that I expect to be worth a potential minus four is that Manchester City defence because they have two nice home fixtures, but most of us have a double up at the moment on Manchester City, so it doesn't really make sense to be going and suggesting one of their defenders at the moment. And all of us already own Cancelo. So Luke Shaw over Dallow because of the four yellow cards and the attacking threat that he's shown up that left-hand side. He has looked really good, just as good as Dallow, although Dallow has been stealing the bonus points. If you want to take a risk and go with Dallow while he's on four yellow cards, then absolutely go for it. But I would be playing it safe and going with Luke Shaw, who looks like he's nailed down that left-hand side again for Manchester United. And again, that 
at Luke Shaw going into the World Cup. He sees the World Cup, he sees international tournaments and the form that we know from him does come back to the fore. So we've spoken about five transfer targets for you. Again, in defense, I'd probably be buying Luke Shaw over any defender at the moment, given you have a Manchester City triple up. Cheap forward in Keith and Moore, a cheap midfielder inside Ben Rama that I expect to outscore Almiron over the next two game weeks. A more premium option up front in Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Again, him versus Callum Wilson is very, very close, but I do fancy a bit of a differential with the Everton man. And then that mid-price 8 million to 6 million midfielder that I'd be going with is Marcus Rashford at the moment. If you already, again, have a triple up on Manchester City. Of course, they have the best fixtures for me over the next two. And if you don't have a triple up on Manchester City, ignore everything I've said in this video and just go and buy those two. Now, some of these are potential transfers into my own team. If you do enjoy FPL content, do go and check out my latest video on my transfer plans for my team going into game week 50. And again, if you have not subscribed over there, please show your support to my channel as well. If you haven't subscribed to Fantasy Football Scout, do that now. Like the video as well. Thank you all so much for your support on this series and on the channel as well. Good luck in game week 15. I'll be back again one more time before the World Cup going into game week 16. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe before you go and I'll be back again next week.